Hey guys, welcome to the interesting podcast with Jedi Brian number seven. Seven is a pretty high number. That's uh, almost two months straight worth of content, which is pretty awesome. This week's guest is casting director Dimitri Blanco. And um, we go into how we met, but Dimitri is a very close friend uh, now. And he was actually the second podcast I ever recorded, I believe. Nope, third. It's third. He was the third podcast I ever recorded, so you'll notice that this interview is way more uh, on the formal side. I get pretty straight to it, um, but it's full of great information, especially if you want to get into acting. Um, he breaks down like what exactly casting directors look for. Um, he gives great tips, so if anyone is interested in that, um, you're really going to like this one. But Dimitri is an awesome guy, one of the best people I know. Uh, he, he's done so much for me. As far as, uh, you know, getting me certain jobs, letting me know auditions show up. He's just a great, great dude. If anyone out there is uh, ever lucky enough to um, to work with him, you've definitely got something special. But uh, I hope you like this. Um, that is about it. When I record these things, I just kind of go off the fly. Like, I don't write notes. I don't even look at anything. I look around. Right now, I'm looking at a burrito that I'm eating. <sighs> Man, I'm real bad at staying on track. Anyway, uh, as always, thanks for checking this out. Here is the interesting podcast number seven with casting director Dimitri Blanco. Roll that theme song. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. So you are the producer and casting director of Tethered. Yes, I am. That's me. Casting. Yes. That's a that's a very interesting job. Mm -hmm. You also work at ITZ Productions as a casting director there. Yes, full time. What is the difference between casting for something on TV and something in a movie? Is there any difference? Um, casting something for TV. You know, I can't really say I've done a lot of casting for TV. Right. Like we did, you know, Alibi Boys, which you were a part of. It right. was a, you know, TV pilot. pilot. And I really did the the extras casting. Right. So I had a smaller role in that, but usually at ITZ I'm casting like infomercials, commercials, stuff like that. Okay. So it's a little different. You know, I really haven't casted anything huge. Right. But with Tethered, it's a lot different because you're casting, you know, characters that you're going to be working with for. You know, right. months at a time it's already been two months now that we're on the movie right. so these are people you're going to be hanging out with for two months so not only do they have to be good at acting you have to at least kind of like them you know sure you don't Which, want to cast a dick because you're spending a lot of time with exactly them. dude yeah gotcha and but I'm, film and tv i mean casting just film and tv it's really not that different yeah i mean uh, you know they're doing the same job they're they're there to do a job you know they're playing a character exactly right. And I'm assuming film is slightly more in depth because they have to flesh out a character, whereas a commercial or infomercial is just dude in background. Oh yeah, I mean, when I'm casting for you know a commercial and infomercial, it's like, do they look like how they're supposed to look? Right. You know what I'm saying? If we're shooting a car commercial, I want a a, a dad looking guy, a mom looking woman, and and kids. I'm not gonna right. cast like some dude with an afro, right? Who you know has like <laughs> a cast a high school there. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's like more about the look more than anything. Because it's not that hard to say, yeah, I shop at Toyota. You right. Know, it's not hard to do that. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, how was how was the audition for Tethered? I had it around. I, I mean, I auditioned. And I got mm -hmm. the part. But it was, yeah. it was at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Like, explain to me how, how that day went. Because I was only there at the very beginning and yeah. then I left. So, Tethered, obviously, is a little indie movie we're making for practically no money. Right. So we can't pay actors, which is, you know, it's a bummer, but that's how you start, man. You know, exactly. that's, that's how you got to do it. So it just really wowed me how many people came out for free. So you it know? was a lot. It was an early casting call. You know, usually you want to hold casting calls in the middle of the day, later in the day, but it was, I mean, you were there at what time? Like It was like seven in the morning. Seven a.m. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, like, that just shows dedication right away. Right. So, anyone who even shows up to a casting call at that time, like, you know they're dedicated and really want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. <laughs> Good foot so forward. That's, exactly. So, it's awesome. And, um... Especially for free, man. I was surprised at how many people came out. Yeah. It was a good turnout, for sure. But um, it was it was awesome, dude. And obviously, it worked, right? Yeah. You were the first person there? Yeah, I was. And uh, <laughs> it, it went well. We had some people come of all walks of life. You know, older people, younger people. I had 18-year-olds, and I had a 50-year-old woman come in. You really? Know, for all kinds of roles. So that was cool. And it shows that, like... You know, you got the young, eager kids, and we got the, the older people who, you know, still want to help out on a little indie movie. Right. And I'm sure they're acting full-time, you know, for money on other gigs, but they just want to be creative and work with other, like, like-minded like people like themselves. Right. Mm. Did you have, uh, do you have any horror stories from casting where, like, casting. this one got a little weird, or this one took it really serious, or anything um, like that? Uh, let me think. Let me think. We don't mention names, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, one time I had this girl come in and it was, it was at ITZ. It was for like a commercial. Right. And she was like, it's my birthday. And like we're on the green screen and she just like starts drinking champagne. Like she brought her own that champagne she brought. and she just starts <laughs> drinking champagne and like booty dancing on the green screen. And I'm just like, what the hell is going on here? And I mean, what am I supposed to do? And I'm just like, okay, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Now it's a commercial that. for a restaurant. Yeah, it's like, it's like yeah, Chuck E. Cheese. It was an infomercial for a security system. That's what it was. And this girl just comes in in like this tight like club outfit. And she's like, it's my birthday. And starts like booty dancing and shit. Obviously she got the part. No, no, she did not get the part. But it was just like, and the casting calls like, you know, you know, uh, regular, you know, 30 year old woman and she comes in with like purple hair and like a club outfit piercings everywhere <laughs> and then starts drinking champagne and going wild it was, it was pretty nutty that's fun yeah that's, but fun. It's, that's why this you know this business is so fun you just never know what's gonna happen right yeah. and performers are all kooky oh they're know? all kooky. they're all kooky but that's what you get that, that's interesting though that like commercials and stuff it's all looks because a lot of them there's no dialogue yeah you know or if there is it's very little mm -hmm. and it's simple you don't have to like super sell it yeah you know it's very interesting where Film, I mean, when you were casting these parts, mm -hmm. you obviously wanted someone who could fit the role. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Jane, the lead, is like early 20s, so you're not going to cast, you know, a 50-year-old woman as exactly. Jane. Exactly, yeah. You know, so you look for that, but how important is acting ability? Oh, definitely. In like, getting a part. We were so open to what people look like. Right. Like, a lot of, when me and Chris talked before, we, ethnicity was wide open. Okay. Like, we weren't like, Peter has to be, you know, a Caucasian male. Like, we were open to anything. Right. Jane didn't have to be a Caucasian female. Q, I was thinking originally I wanted Q to be, like, a, a Spanish kid or an Afri African-American kid. Right. But then you just, your acting ability, I was like, this is a guy. Like, we... <laughs> Thank you. That's, it, it's cooler to cast that way, I feel like, because you can, you're more open to different ideas and stuff. Right. So... You don't have a preconceived notion right when they walk in the exactly. door. Exactly. Like, when you read the script, you do... Right. But why, why, you know, limit yourself or limit this story? Let the gotcha. actors fill in, fill in the shoes for you. So acting ability is huge. Uh, like Alex, I was, I was thinking Jane, you know, a little older and a little more roughed up, if you know what I mean. Right. She, she's a, she's a thief. little more of the world. Of the world. Yeah. yeah. That, that she's a part of, but like. She just turned on the switch, dude. And it was insane. <laughs> She's incredible. Yeah, I don't know. So if, good. Were you there when she actually auditioned? I wasn't, but it I've was, seen her act in scenes here, and it's yeah. phenomenal. It was next level, dude. She's. I was amazing. like about to tear up. Actually, I remember. I have a great story. Yeah. I uh, we're like okay, whenever you're ready, and I, I I was reading with the actors, and I was letting Chris watch it because he's the director, obviously. Right. It's more important that he sees the performances. Of course. So I'm helping them read it, and I'm just looking down. And it's like 30 seconds go by. And I'm like, what the, what the hell's going on, you know? So then I look up and I'm like, oh shit, she's getting into character this whole time. Really? And then she just starts reading, dude. And it was just, it was insane. Wow. Yeah. It was, like we knew, I think, right away. Like we still had other people come out for Jane, but me and Chris kind of like gave each other right the Right the bat. This is the one. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I... the Her emotional climax of the movie that we filmed already, like that scene where she can just... Get into it, reach that peak, have the emotional experience, and then back to one, yep. and do it again. And you're just like insane. After each scene, you you want to like hug her. You're like, are you oh, okay? Dude, exactly. Are you okay? And she's like, yeah, I'm fine. Exactly. And she's like, all bubbly. Like, then... I've read the script and I feel so bad for her. Exactly. Right now. And Nathan, dude, the emotional climax of the whole movie, mm -hmm. him to go tears and yes. like crying to do it again. Like he's so impressive. It's you amazing. can tell he's a very seasoned actor. Absolutely. Like he just. 
um, you know, we, we, me and Chris have been talking, and I don't want to upset anyone, but of I course. feel like he's been the most consistent. Sure. You sure. know what I'm saying? Just Absolutely. because he's so seasoned and oh, he he's knows, been doing he knows it for what he's years. doing. He yeah, and it's doing. like, he's such a professional, like, Nathan, you ready? Yeah, let's go. And yeah. And we do the scene, and he's good to go. Like, he, he knows what he's doing, takes direction very well, and yeah. he's just a sweetheart. So I know Chris has gone on the record and saying, like, being able to be directed is very important. Very important. Working on a bunch of projects, have you had people that just didn't take direction? Yeah, I'm not going to say any names. Yeah, of course. No no names, but yeah. like... There's, you know, there's people that uh, they have this preconceived notion of what their character is supposed to be. But oh, filmmaking okay. is a, a collaborative effort, you know? It's, sure. It's not what you think. It's like, you know, everyone has their own ideas. Right. So it's like, no, I want to play it this way. And I'm just like, but you're not, you know, you're just that... Yeah, you you're doing that. a job as an. I mean, I hope I don't sound like a dick, but no, of course. As an actor, you're getting paid or not paid. You're doing a job. You're supposed to do your job. What the director tells you. Correct. That's, that's the point. It's his job. Yeah, the yeah. director is supposed that's to. That's his job. You. Your job is to listen and act. Exactly. So I, I mean, I hope I don't offend anyone. No, I, was, I mean, it is what it is. You yeah. know, like I. That actually reminds me. The first day of shooting this movie uh-huh. was the only scene, in, uh, one of the only scenes in the whole movie where I'm by myself. Yep. You know, I'm in my boxers sleeping. In my bedroom. In your bedroom. <laughs> in your bedroom. And I remember I was so nervous that day because I was like, oh God, you mm. know, I've done like YouTube videos here and there. I did drama for like four or five years yep. and I did like a children's theater, but no like film acting on a set with a director, like real deal stuff I dreamed of as a kid. Yeah. You know, so I'm driving to the set and I'm like, oh God, I don't know if I can do this. So the whole day before, I rehearsed the scene by myself. Uh-huh. And I was like, read the lines. Okay, here's the acting. And I acted it out in the room like five or six times. But I acted it out seriously. Because in the scene, I get a phone call. And it's like, okay, I'll be right over. Let me grab some stuff. I'll be right there. So I rehearsed it. <sighs> okay, I'm on my way. Getting out of bed, running out of the room. Okay? I get there. And I'm like, all right, you ready? All right, Chris, what do you want? And he goes, you don't care. It's like, wait, what do you mean? He goes, no, like, you don't care. <laughs> So everything that I'd practiced, like got it to a T, I got the bits down, I got the beats, mm-hmm. out the window. Out the He's window. like, no, you don't care. I was like, what do you mean I don't care? This is serious. He goes, yeah, but you don't think so. so and that's what acting oh, is, man. You just gotta be, it's a flip of a dime. You have to do it, yeah. do it a different way. It's, it was very rough. Yeah. <laughs> My first day, I was like, wait, everything I did was wrong. <laughs> you did great though, man. Thank that was, you. That was a great I tried. Time. Yeah. I tried. It's, uh, it's fun. It's a very fun set. Mm. Um, with... Uh, You've done some reality TV. Yeah, that's unquote. that's mostly the what, bread uh, and butter, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a majority of what ITC yeah. does. Reality. Yep. Yeah. Is it there, pays the bills, you know? Is it because it's so popular now? Uh, it's very it's, it's very popular. You know what? Necessarily, I don't even think it's that popular. Yeah. Like when you talk to people, no one's like, "I love reality TV." Yeah. Like, Moonshiners is my favorite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just the the networks. It's really cheap, man. That's that's gotcha. really, it's so all it's about production. money. It's right. all about money. You of know, course, everything in life is. Of course, it's just super cheap to make. Oh, you just throw you know three camera guys out there, showrunner, a couple PAs, production manager. It's very cheap to make, and uh, I think that's why it's so popular. And Makes they just sense. oversaturate the market. Gotcha. Yeah. And you've worked on how many reality TV shows? Can't even a count bunch. them. Right. Just, Which one was the most fun or interesting? Uh, the most fun. I actually got to go to Nebraska to shoot really? a show called Iron um, Iron Wars. It was yeah. a sizzle proof of concept, which if okay. people don't know what that is, it's like a it's like a ten minute tape, ten minute uh, video. Okay. Kind of showcasing what the show would be about if it. Got okay, like up. a little demo. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. demo exactly. Okay. So uh, we got to go to Nebraska. You know, I love traveling. That's one of the reasons sure. I'm in this business. Absolutely. And, uh, so I, I always, I grew up in Florida, you know, Naples, pretty, it's, it's a city, you know, yeah. lots oh, yeah. of stuff going on. Especially now, it's getting bigger. Exactly. Yeah. So I go to Nebraska and I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Rural farms. <laughs> Rural farms. And like the cast of the, of the show is just a bunch of, you know, Nebraska people and the farmers. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was insane, man. It really opened my eyes. I'm like, whoa. I really need to, you know, get out of Florida and, and check out the rest of the world because right. there's a lot of different stuff going on. There's hills? Yeah. <laughs> and it was just it was just fun, man. Like I went from, you know, Naples where everything is a fifteen minute drive away to Nebraska where the closest McDonald's was an hour away. Right. It was insane. It was right. it, it was it was awesome though. I love traveling. That's, That's why it was so fun. Yeah, and it's like you just meet I, I love meeting new people, man, and like sure. talking to new people, hearing different perspectives on, on different stuff. Right. And that's why it was probably the most fun to me. That's cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, as a casting director, it's 
best. You meet so many people. Oh yeah, all definitely. The time. Dude, I've met so many interesting people, and like I've kept, I, I keep in touch with literally everyone I talk to, just because, you know, you never know. Like right. Uh, especially when traveling, man. Just have contacts everywhere just just because i like i like people man i just right. i love people that's a good place i, I to love be. doing this just sitting down and, and riffing with someone right for an hour just about nonsense sure it's my favorite thing in the world man that's shooting awesome. the shit yeah if, if i got paid to talk with people just about life in general oh. <laughs> D- the dream <laughs> the dream exactly so as a casting director what advice would you give to an actor who's going to audition for something um ooh advice all right um <laughs> or what do you look for besides i mean you got looks actor? yeah you got looks and talent is there anything else like what's something that they should think about when they're coming to an audition it's so hard to say because every casting uh, it's all different director right? is so different like i'm very personable i want you to feel like you're at home i don't want you to be nervous right but some are just cold as ice man you walk in and they're like slate yeah okay go whereas i'm like hey you know nice to meet you what's your name like Right. Thank you for coming out. You try to make them feel at ease. Exactly. You know, a little five minute introductory period. Right. But uh, you know, I'm sure there's others who don't give a shit about you and, oh, I'm and sure. what you're here for and they just want to hear you read and that's it. Right. You know what I'm saying? They got you right pegged when they look at you. Exactly. Like this won't work. It doesn't matter what. So just I mean, be nice obviously. Right. And just take direction well and don't don't uh don't don't take things the wrong way, you know. It's gotcha. a job. If they say, you know, that's it, we've seen enough, then don't start crying or, you know. <laughs> right, it is what it get is. Get offended or be like, do you want more? If they want right. more, they'll let you know. You gotcha. Know what I'm okay, so don't overstep your boundaries. Exactly. Go in, try to be confident, but take direction is very important. Exactly, yep. Gotcha, okay. Um, to someone, what made you want to do casting specifically? Was it just the socket you were put in? Yes, like I got just shoehorned to go into it. it. Okay. Uh, actually, it's very strange and bad story. The casting director before me uh, passed away. Oh, okay. Just very sudden death. and Wow. They needed a replacement right away, and I had been uh, working there, you know, doing kind of jack-of-all-trades stuff, just running around, shooting, right. editing, all that kind of stuff, and, you know, associate producing. And they saw that I was good with people, so they're just like, hey, you know, you'd be good for this, and that's how I got thrown into it. Hey. And it was like, uh, hey, you're the casting director now. We have a shoot in two weeks. Cast 30 people. And I was like, okay, oh. sure. <laughs> that was a wake-up call. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's how I got thrown into it. But yeah. now that I've been doing it for a little bit, it's fun, man. I Like yeah. like I said, I like meeting people. So it fits right, right in with that. And uh, it's, I want to, um, like as a person in production, I want to do every single job just yeah. to know it. So okay, that, that makes sense. Because I want to produce. Like that's my, my end game is to be like an so executive produ- producer. So uh, producer, that's what you want. Yeah. So I want to know every single aspect of it. I want to do casting. I want to do lighting. I want to do directing. I want to do everything. That's just cool. Just so that I know when I'm producing, like, I know what you this know guy's what going say. through. Right. I know what that guy's going through. I know what she's going through to be gotcha. in the shit and know all the problems that they have so I can be more relatable to them and, you know, sure. try to help them out. Which is, which is admirable. I mean, yeah. there are some people that are producers that don't know anything. They're just exactly. like, just get it done. And that's you know? why, that's like a pet peeve of mine, you know? Right. Yeah. So that that's cool because, like... I mean, when you're working on a production, to know how all of it works, like you said, you you know what to look for, uh-huh. you know, and that's like actors that become directors. Uh-huh. They say it's really actors like working with actor directors because they know how to give exactly. the actor what they need. Yep, and you're more resur- uh, more resourceful. Like, right, I don't need to ask you how to do this. I can just do it myself and get right. it done. More know? of a hands on. Exactly. Sort of yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Do you uh do you work on anything like creating yourself, writing or? I have a couple things in the works right now. Yeah. You know? I mean, everyone does, right? Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, I I just personally, I don't think I'm the most creative person. Right. So you're a, you're a worker. Yeah. You're I'm more work. of a real. I'm I'm more realistic in that sense. Like I'm realistic with myself. You know. Gotcha. I'm more of a worker, exactly. You're not like this big storyteller. Like I have all these stories to say. You're like, yeah. How do we make a movie? I'll get the job done. Exactly. That's cool. I like to be. You know. I want to take this creative person and help them create their dreams. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's very cool because a lot of people will get, especially in this business, you know, very full of themselves. Yeah. And they'd exactly. be like, no, I don't do that. I mean, there are some, th- there's one story in particular that I really want to tell. Yeah. It's very close to home for me. Cool. So I'm working on that right that now. You're, that's, that one's, that one's yes, yours. Yes. It's like my That's baby. cool. Yeah. And you would want to direct that? 
Does directing yes. is directing something you'd want to do? Yeah, for sure. Like I yeah. said, I want to do everything. Right. And it's just like I'm a young man. Maybe maybe I direct once and I'm like, holy crap, this is <laughs> what I really want to do. You know, you just don't know. Or maybe I act one day and I'm just like, wow, this right? is awesome. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Yeah. The crew does it all. Same thing with you, man. Maybe one day you direct something and you're like, what the <laughs> hell am I missing? You know, you just this is a lot of work. Yeah. You, you don't know until acting. you try it, man. You don't know until you try it. What are and don't say me. What are some of the most fun, talented actors you've worked with that you can think of? Like and just this person. in general? Yeah. Just um, like on this TV show, on this movie, like, wow. Yeah. That one. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've worked with almost all of them. If you casted them, they are talented. Or whatever. Are you talking about on Tethered or just in general? In general. As a casting director, what's one that you're like, that? You know? Alex I, really impresses me, man. Yeah? She's really good. Let's put the Alex name in Pico. there. Yeah. Alex See if Pico. she'll listen to this. Yeah, hopefully she does. But she's really impressive. You said not to mention you, but I love working with you, man. Oh you just God. bright up my day. You're so fun to be around, and I'm not kissing your ass. But oh my god, a um, little more, a little more. I like <laughs> literally everyone on Tethered is very cool. Like yeah, I, I like working with incredible everyone. Danny uh, Cancio, who is actually my cousin. Oh, He's nice! Funny. I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't know that? I did. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, yeah, he plays Rich in the movie. Family movie. He. Uh, <laughs> He takes it a little more serious. He's very intense. He's very intense, but I, I really respect that. Oh, absolutely. And, like, he Everyone has really their process. Yeah. And he's, dude, that camera rolls, he's on it. Yeah, he's on it, exactly. Yeah, there's no, like, you know, me and Josh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you turn this light on? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really like working with him because he takes it very seriously. Absolutely. And he's ready to go. I like working with Nathan. Um, off this set, uh, I worked on Alibi Boys, and I really liked um, one of the actresses, Trista Robinson. She was really cool. Um, like I said, I didn't really like do anything that big on that movie. I right. was just doing extra like, casting, doing everything. I was like, a key PA. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was a PA, doing all that stuff. Key PA. So that was really cool. She was really nice. And uh, man, honestly, I just love working with actors in general. Like right. they're just cool people, and you know, I'm I've never sure. Really, and, with, dickhead, you know? and doing casting like you pick them yeah you know? exactly. so you already have that like this is the one yep. trust me guys they'll bring it exactly yeah that's cool that's a good thing about do, being casting too a casting director yeah like if i do ever want to direct or write it's like i know yeah you know people the people around me who like i know can bring it and the people to stay away from Next sure people to stay away from of know? course of course yeah. there's always going to be some sort of diva that's like yeah. i'm in a thing now so yeah I'm, exactly. I'm it yeah yeah that makes sense yeah that makes sense um, what is something, what is a lesson that you've learned being on all these different productions? Like, what have you taken away yourself? Like, if I was to give something, if you're going to be on set, this, you know, and is it like work, always remember to know where you are on set. You know what I mean? Like you learn from uh, this director, how things are supposed to be run. Like what's something you've taken away from working in the industry um, that you have? One thing is to just be a sponge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just take it all in. Take it all in. And talk to everyone. Okay. Everyone, you know what I'm saying? Talk sure. to the director. Ask him, you know, how did he get there? Or what's his process? Stuff like that. And then talk to, you know, the PA. And talk to them and learn how they got there. And just... Right. Like I said, I like talking to people. And then you just learn everything about the business that way, I guess, you know? Right, yeah. So there's a, when you're on set, take advantage of it. Yeah, exactly. Ask everybody can. Don't, like, do yeah. your job, but also, like... Enjoy the experience. Yeah. And, and like when you're doing your job, just shut up and do your job. Yeah. You, know you don't want to be the PA talking to the director when he's yeah. working. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. No time and place. That's yeah. important as well. Yep. Yeah. Just be a sponge though. That's what I would say. Yeah. For sure. Just take it all in and and be nice too. You know? Yeah. That's, be fun I've, to work with because no one's going to yeah, no want to work with you if you're not right. fun to be around. If you're you know? a dick, people will remember. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of people work on the same things. Yep. It's all about who you know, man. I know that's really cliche to say, but it really is true. Facts are facts. Exactly. Very cool. So who are some of your favorite professional actors, like in Hollywood? Real actors. Yeah. Not real. Yeah, real that sounded so real dickish. Actors. Oh, my real God. Real actors. I'm so sorry. I mean, I'm actors. sorry you've been working with fake oh actors for so long. Oh, my God. That's like please, <laughs> please delete that. Some of my favorite actors in Hollywood. We'll say famous actors. Famous actors. Um, Christian Bale. Love Christian Bale. Okay. Jack Nicholson. Nice. Uh, Christopher Walken, Steve Buscemi. There you go. Go old goes school. On on. Old yeah. school. Um, uh, let's see. Matt Damon. I love Tom Cruise. People give him a hard time. Dude, I don't know why. I dig him. Cruise is the did shit. Did you dude. see Edge of Tomorrow? I did not, but I heard it's awesome. Dude, check it out. Yeah. It's it's Groundhog Day with Aliens and War. That sounds amazing. And Emily Blunt. And Emily Blunt, yeah, who has a badass like sword thing. 
I gotta check it out. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. But yeah, man, the list goes on and on, dude. Yeah, just, there's so much talent. Yeah, I mean, my only complaint with the whole Hollywood, uh, you know, actors A list thing, is that um, it's really hard to watch, you know, the ten biggest blockbusters and you see the same faces in them all. Right. It's really hard to disassociate actors with the characters they're playing on screen if sure. they're just you know hugely famous. Right, you know what I'm saying it's like, like it's hard to not hear Jack Sparrow when Johnny Depp does any sort of yelling. Yeah, and it's like, dude, that's that, that's not Jack Reacher, that's Tom Cruise, or, or right, or that's not Mad Max, it's Tom Hardy. You know what I'm saying? Right. I kind of like the whole unknown thing, I hear that. like Star I hear Wars that. did. Yeah, because exactly. like it'd be so hard to imagine Luke Skywalker if he was, you know, uh, Matt Damon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, dude, that's not Luke, that's Matt Damon. Right, yeah. that makes sense. That makes sense. You, and you agree with me on that? Absolutely. Yeah, and right. like coming from a casting director, you yeah. see the actor and the character, mm-hmm. so you're able to tell when it's not super clicky, like Mad Max. Yeah. You know, like all right, it's Mad Max, and you got some bits that are like it's Tom Hardy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it's absolutely. it's also back to the whole like. You know, give some people a chance, man. Why do we have to have the same 15 people in every single movie? Give some younger actors, some new actors, get some new blood in there. You know? Right. Why yeah. does, uh... Like, look at episode seven. Yeah. I mean, you've got some big ones. you got Andy Serkis. Yeah. you got the le- legacies of Harrison mm-hmm. Ford, Carrie Fisher, yep. uh, Mark Hamill. But yeah. then Daisy Ridley hasn't done anything. Exactly. She's done, like, I think one student film or short film and, like, a commercial. Exactly. And she's the lead in episode seven. That blows my mind. You know, John Boyega did He's it. not too huge. That is not a household no. name by any means. Not at all. Yeah. Like... No, I don't know many people who've seen Attack the Block. Exactly. Have you seen it? I've heard it's great. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. He's actually the one I'm most excited for. Me too, actually. Movie. From the trailer, that he's, whole, like, he's when he's so all breathing good. heavy he's on, so is it uh, K- K- Baku? Jaku. Jaku. Yeah. When he's breathing heavy on Jaku, I'm just yeah, like, yeah. oh my god. Stormtrooper, awesome. new armor, oh yeah. snap, yep. you know? But then they have Oscar Isaacs, who's been in a bunch of stuff, but he's yeah. so good. Yeah. You but know? that's also not another household yeah, not name. a super known name. Yeah, exactly. exactly. He's done a couple Coen Brothers and little things here and there, but yep. not a household. Exactly. I mean, they will be now. Wait till they Christmas. They will be now. Exactly. Everyone will know Daisy Ridley as yeah. the new Natalie Portman. Did you get the new Daisy Ridley action figure? Oh my right. God. All yep. the all the like kids that were like, "Oh, Emma Watts is my crush." It's all gonna be Daisy Ridley. Yeah. You'll see. I mean, you'll see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, who are some of your favorite directors? Kevin Smith, Kevin my Smith. favorite director. Number one. Yep. Number right one. Uh, Nolan's great. Scorsese's great. Um, let's see. I love Brian De Palma. Um, God, this, the list goes on and on too, man. Just as a cinephile, you just you love every film. Oh, right sure. There. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's got their own things. Yep, yeah. exactly. Oliver Stone, Ridley Scott, of course. Right. John Carpenter, huge one. John Carpenter. John Carpenter's in my top three. I can't believe I didn't think yeah. of him right away. And then the newer blood, you got like Ty West, you got Adam Wingard. Love James Wan. He's not really small time anymore. He's killing it now. With right. Furious 7. He just got announced to do Aquaman. I'm sure you heard about dude, that. Dude, yeah. That's going to be good. Insidious is great. Like, he just... And he made Saw, dude. Saw's like one of the greatest dude, horror Saw, franchises of all time. I was never a big Saw fan, but I love the first movie. The first movie's... A, it's dude. perfect. Right? And then they, you know, then they super capitalized on it. Yeah. The second one was like, what are you doing? Can you blame them, though? Can I can't. No, dude. <laughs> Seven if, movies later. Dude, if the money's there, get it. Yeah, it's exactly. not going to go to an orphanage. Yep. You know? <laughs> John Carpenter said it dude he's like remake all my movies i get a fucking check every time it comes right. out <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> absolutely you know, adam absolutely. wingard said it uh adam wingard's the director he, he tweeted the other day i loved it he's like john carpenter has a great fuck you pay me attitude to the world and i'm just like god he does and i love right it. dude you know? i mean hey they're gonna remake it. it anyways why be fucking yeah dick I mean, about it and this like, year alone jurassic park terminator mm-hmm. mad max i mean it's the year of the remake. Yeah. Unfortunately, know? remakes are going to happen no matter what. We For can't sure. stop them. For sure. I mean, we can stop going to the movie theater, but no one's going to... It's gonna, like stopping now. Yeah, right. no one's going to do that. They're like, yeah. oh my god, a Jurassic Park movie? It could be like a dinosaur taking a shit, but people will still go see it because of the name. Oh yeah, and you want to find out if there's lilac samples in it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dude. So, uh, Kevin Smith. Why Kevin Smith? Um, Kevin Smith. Because... I was very young when I was going through the whole, you know, like, oh, I think this is something I might want to do phase. Right. I was like in my teens and I got Netflix back when it was DVD. Right. Oh my oh, God. Oh, DVD oh. only Netflix. One at a time, unless yep. you want to pay more. I got two, two at a time. Oh, big spender. But uh, I remember the first movie I rented was 28 Days Later, then The Truman Show, and then Clerks. And those yeah. three right there are like, what the hell? My brain is on <laughs> overload. Like, those are three amazing films. Right. But um, yeah, I saw Clerks and I'm just like, these guys are me. Like, All right. They're just nerds talking about comic books and Star Wars. And <laughs> they're in a, in a, you know, in a convenience store. It's so simple. And it's like, dude, 
I could do this. You know what I'm saying? That's gotcha. what everyone thoughts is with Clerks. You're like, right. this isn't hard. I, I can do it. And then like you just start watching other Kevin Smith movies and it's just like, he's just next level, man. I don't right. know how to explain it. A lot of people don't agree. Right. But his dialogue is just so simple. It's so realistic. It's so grounded. And then right. he's just hilarious. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen Chasing Amy. You ever see that? Uh, once when I was younger. I'm going to rewatch all of these. That is the greatest romantic movie I've ever seen. Really? I love that movie. See, see, I'm saying that from a Kevin Smith fanboy. Of course. Boy yeah, yeah. No, perspective, though. Everyone's got their thing. But God, man, that movie's great. And just like, he's so inspirational. His whole evening with series. I don't know if you've ever watched it. Yeah, I, he's doing one at Supercon. I, hopefully we go. Yeah. And, and if if you're there, then I have to drag you to that. I will <laughs> drag you by your feet to go see it. Because after that, your life will be changed, man. Yeah, we're going to make I a movie sounds... in the parking lot starting right now. Dude, I'm so, <laughs> it's so dramatic, but... Actually, I remember I went a couple months back and I texted you or something and you were like, oh my God, you yeah. saw how was it? I'm like, dude, it was life changing. That's cool, Because he's man. just such an inspirational dude. So you like the uh, the attainability that he has. It's like, you can do this. Look at my movie. Yeah. You can do this well, too. Well, because he's so honest and humble about it. Right. He's like, he's so, um, he's so, he gets really down on himself a lot. He's like, I'm just a fucking fat piece of shit. Like, I suck. Like, right. He's so humble about it. He's not cocky in any way. He's like, fucking I suck. You guys can do better than me. Right. And he's just he's just a great guy, it seems like, man. Like, I've never met him in person. I really hope to. You've seen him in person. I've seen him in person, but not met. It's a different. Yeah, yeah. it is. It yeah. is. You've been to conventions. I've, and I've stuff. seen George Lucas. You've seen George Lucas, I've but you didn't him. meet George Lucas. I didn't Lucas. meet him. He, uh, we were at Celebration 6, mm -hmm. and he wasn't supposed to be there. Like, George Lucas isn't going to come to a con. He's God. And he showed up. He just walked on stage in the middle of Seth Green's panel. I've never heard that amount of applause. Like, yeah. the building shook. Like, yeah. <gasps> yep. So, with my own naked eyes, I've seen the maker. And isn't it weird when you see your idols like that in Dude, person? You're like, am I in the same room as them? Oh, I, my God. I still was like, we breathe the same air. Yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> Like, man. if they put a dome on top of us, like, his yeah. CO2 is at the same place mine is. <laughs> yep. Is, is, do you remember your first con uh, experience when you met yes, one do. of your favorite people? Yes, I do. Tell it. Okay, well, there's different ones. Okay, my first con experience... When you met somebody, like when a celebrity. Yeah. The first celebrity I ever met. Actually, that one that one I'll have to think about. I'll tell you my favorite, because uh -huh. that one's easier. Do it. Nathan Fillion. Okay. Okay, I flew to Dallas because they had the entire cast of Firefly and Serenity, the mm -hmm. whole crew. I was like, this is my favorite show of all time. Yep. I, I love it. Like, that's, that's my show. It's my favorite show ever. Ever. And so I flew to Dallas. My uh, brother lived in Texas at the time. He was like three hours away. And, um... <laughs> He was actually deployed. He was in Korea because he's in the military. Mm -hmm. So my sister-in-law, his wife, picked me up from the airport. We drove three hours to Dallas and spent the weekend there. And I remember Nathan Fillion being probably one of my favorite celebrities just as people. He's one of those people that always said, like, people have always treated me like an A-list actor when I wasn't. So he's very cool to all of his fans. Mm -hmm. And I remember I waited like six hours in line for his autograph. That's insane. And... um. <laughs> He, his line, the only person who had a bigger line than him was William Shatner. They had the whole section of the convention hall was him. And I remember when I met him, you try to make it last as long as possible. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I mean, photo ops is, ding, ding. you could try to get in a sentence that makes him say something. You're like, oh, we talked. And then yeah. you walk out. Autographs, you get a little more time. Yeah. Not much, because you have to, while they're signing, you can talk. Exactly. And I remember, uh, I mean, there were thousands of people, and I'm not exaggerating, thousands of people. In his line, every single person. He was like, hi, I'm Nathan. I was like, I know who you are. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm Brian. He's blah, blah, blah. And I had a replica of uh, his pistol from Serenity, the movie. And I gave it to him. And he goes, where do you want me to sign it? I was like, where do you want to sign it? He goes, I like along the handle. He's like, it just looks really nice. I was like, can you sign it along the handle? You know? Yep. <laughs> and just, he was so genuine and so nice. And it was everything I dreamed he'd be in the no homo kind of homo way. Yeah. Because when you idolize somebody... You want them to be this thing you've painted them up to be. You don't want them to be a dick. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? The worst thing that can possibly happen is when you're like, dude, what's up, man? Cool. And they're like, get out of my way. Yeah. It's like, that's worse heartbreak than any partner can give you. <laughs> exactly. I agree, man. You know? Because they're like, heroes to you. They're not absolutely. a girlfriend or a boyfriend. They're, they are they were idol. in the screen that you didn't think existed. Mm -hmm. You know? So that was that was definitely the most impactful. I can see the goosebumps Italian. on your arm. Yeah, dude. I, it's nuts like but it's insane right it was it's a you totally touch them thing. And you're like what the 
Yeah, like my, I did a photo op with him before that, and I'm dressed as Malcolm Reynolds, his character. Yep, Firefly. I've seen the pictures. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> biggest smile I've ever had on in my life. Yeah. And when I walked into the photo booth, you've done photo ops. With I've never done a photo op. I it don't is, really believe in them. I don't know. It is literally, it is strange. It's yeah. literally like they stay in a room, you get in a line, you walk up to them, take a break, stand next. Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. That's how the con makes money off of them. Yes, exactly. They make money off autographs. Yeah. And uh, when I, the second I walked in, dressed as him, he goes, and who are you dressed as? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh. <gasps> And he grabs my hand and he pulls me in real close to him. And I'm like in his armpit, happiest place I've ever been. And uh, we're, to, we're like man shaking. And I was like, this is the best thing ever. Like, it was so cool. Yep. It was so cool. Who's the coolest celebrity you've met? Oh, I was, the coolest is, uh, man, there's been so many. I go to a lot of conventions as well. Same. But the whole reason I brought that up is because it sounds so silly, but the first convention I ever went to, yeah. Jason Mewes was there from Jan Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. And, like, to him, at that time, I was, like, a 14-year-old kid or 15-year-old kid. Like, right. Jen Sullivan are my fucking heroes. Dude. Right, yeah. Sorry for cussing. It's Doogie Boochies. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> man. And, like, uh, it was a smaller convention, so it's not like that, you know, like, you know, sign and then move. It's right. like you got like a five minute experience with him. Right. So it's like I walk up to Jason Mewes and I'm like shaking, dude. <laughs> oh my God. It's he's, right yeah, he's right there. He's right there. He's right there. And he was just the nicest guy, man. And he, Jay is like Jay. Yeah. Like Jason Mewes is Jay from Jay and Silent Bob. It's not a character. That That's is awesome. him. Dude. He's, hey, man. And I took a picture with him and it's just like, it was so insane to be in the same like parameter as this guy that you've only seen on tv and movies right like, for like, they look kind of different i thought they'd be taller exactly yeah. <laughs> man it was just insane and it's uh like you said bro it's just it's goosebumps it's fantastic yeah it's fantastic i love conventions too dude me too what's your favorite uh the one i best one i've ever been to yeah man there was one year we went to uh spooky empire ultimate horror weekend okay and that's up in Orlando. Like seven, yeah, I was in Orlando. Okay. It's like a horror convention side. Yeah, but they I, get everyone. I have friends who've gone. Yeah, like Jason Mewes is not in any, or he's in maybe like one horror movie, but he's known for Jane Silent Bob. Yeah, exactly. But he's there. He's and like Jay. <laughs> a bunch of random people will go, and uh, it was just a fun time. And like, we met some cool celebrities. Anthony Michael Hall was there from like Weird what? Science fam and stuff. That's cool. And like, he was just at the bar getting drunk, and I just got to sat that da- sit down with him and like get drunk with him. What? He, like, proceeded to call, like, Judd Nelson on the phone. Like, he literally called Judd Nelson, and, like, Judd Nelson's <laughs> like, dude, why the hell are you calling me at 2 o'clock in the morning? And then, like... Because he... I'm with the guy at a con who likes you. Yep, Breakfast exactly. Club. And he was just, he was really, he was really cool, man. And that was, like, right when The Dark Knight came out. So oh, he what? was in that as the, the Gotham City Tonight like, yeah. talk show host. And he, wow. that was awesome. It was just a great time, man. Conventions are fun, man. You're, like, around... A bunch of people who like the same stuff as you. Agreed. It's the best. Yeah. It's like being in a, a fairy tale world, you know? Yeah. That means, like real life. Right. It's like... It's a celebration of the fandoms. Exactly. It's fantastic. It's like, hey, dad, can we talk about, you know, Star Wars? Uh, no. The hell? Right. Go to work. You, you, <laughs> you mean the lifesavers? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> lifesavers. <laughs> exactly, man. So it's just fun to be around those, those type of people. Absolutely. People I love conventions. Yeah. I love, they're my favorite places. Um, I, my favorite's Tampa Bay. I I've love Tampa Bay Comic Con. Uh, I think I went to Fanboy Expo. Fanboy Expo is Tampa. Tampa. That's a great one. Yeah, it's, it's smaller. A lot that's smaller. why I like it. Yeah. Um, I did my first convention I ever went to was Tampa Bay Comic Con, mm-hmm. and it was six, seven, eight, nine years ago. Mm-hmm. It was one of their first ones. Damn, nine years ago. They wow. had they were in the lobby of a DoubleTree hotel. The whole convention. Yeah. Like this is what it. It was smaller than Fanboy Expo. Wait, in the lobby. In the lobby. Whoa. Right? Like this, you walk in through the doors, and then there's a conference room. Yeah. There it is. And it was so small. There was 300 people. All attendance, vendors included, celebrity guests. That's insane. They had uh, Space Ghost. Nice. He was the big celebrity guy. Yeah. Um, and I remember I'd never been to a con before. I drove all the way to Tampa. I was like, oh, it's Comic-Con. I've heard about these things. Yeah, you Comic-Con. Know? <laughs> I, I went on eBay, bought a Jedi costume that wasn't very good, but yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I've got a like FX lightsaber. And um, I remember you walked in, and there's tables, and then... You pay and you walk through the doors and there's the con and it's just comic books. Yeah. There's not there's no like pop culture things. There's like a Japanese stand with like uh-huh. ramen and soda. Very very small and intimate. Like no guests. I mean, yeah. They had like fan film stuff that you could do where people would showcase their art. Well, I remember the second I walked in was the first time I ever saw someone from the five hundred first. Changed my life. Yeah. Because I'd never seen a stormtrooper before. I'd never seen it. Star Wars is my thing. Oh, I you know. know. 
So imagine being as into Star Wars as I am and seeing a You were trooper. kind of a kid too. You were like I was, I was 14. You were 14. I was 14. Okay. And I remember seeing this clone trooper. It was Commander Bly. His name was Bert. And he, we're still good friends. Yeah. And I remember seeing him. And I was like, oh my God. And I left. I couldn't handle it. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So I walked back out with my brother and my parents. And I was like, oh, you have no idea what's on the other side of this wall. <laughs> so I walked back over and I'm so nervous. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And we finally get up the courage to ask him for a picture, mm-hmm. you know, and he's like, oh, cool. And he's all posing and he's got the DC-15 long rifle and he points it at me and I have this like dread, like my heart just sinks when he points his blaster at me because I'm like, oh my God, this is what Order 66 is like. <laughs> <laughs> and you started, a I tear st- came across I still your have eye. the picture and yeah. I was like, I'm terrified. I got to see that. And in the picture, I'm like acting like I'm going to block it and I like... If something comes out of this, right about there would block it. <laughs> like, and that's when you became an actor, life. my friend. Yeah, right. That was it. <laughs> that's what, that was, that was when I committed. <laughs> exactly, man. Uh-huh. But it, like, dude, it was so good. And that's why Tampa Bay is my favorite because I've been there since the very beginning. Now it's like 60,000 people it's at huge. the Tampa Bay Convention Center. They get all the Game of Thrones guests. Mm-hmm. You know, I go every year all three days. Usually all I go to days. a con like one day because of work. I call off work. It's all three days for Tampa. Mm-hmm. That's, that's just, your baby. That's that like one's mine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, it's very dear to me because I, I grew up with it. Dude, know? it's so big now. So it's it cool. It is so big. It's massive. Is it bigger than Megacon now? No, no way. No, I mean, Megacon's Megacon, still bigger. Megacon is the second largest in the country. Besides San Diego. San Diego's bigger. Wow. I think New York Comic Con was in charge of it, like was in front of it as far as attendance goes. I think Megacon might have beat it this year. Mm. If not, it's it's in top three in top the three. country. Gotcha. You know? Dragon Con is massive. In Atlanta, correct? That's a, yeah, that's the giant one. That's, I think they, they're around 65,000. I could be wrong, but I'm God, pretty sure it's 65. That's insane, man. It's, it's nuts, which is, I mean, it's cool for the fanboys in the sense that now that it's mainstream, there's more of it. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Where before, like, where am I going to get Star Wars shirts? There's none. And then they come up and go, oh, sweet. Or when Marvel, Marvel kicked up after Spider-Man. There's tons of Marvel stuff. Whereas yeah. before Walmart, you had to go to like KB Toys yep. and get the specific figures. Exactly. You know, so I mean, it's a double edged sword because with it being so mainstream, it can get ruined. Yeah. You know, like the Green Lantern movie. We sound we sound hipsterish, dude, right? But it's dude, true. Like I'm I'm very, I, I love what I love a lot. Exactly. And I don't discredit anybody. Like mm-hmm. there are bronies, there are furries, there are all kinds of people. Dude, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Do you? Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's not me, but, but I'm not gonna tread on you. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Like, but it, it's, I, I enjoy the fact that they're bigger for the reason that there's more, you know what I mean? Yeah. The bigger it gets, the better for the fanboys. I mean, we get more. Especially for the, you know, the kids, like. Exactly. Exactly. Like in the seventies, dude, if you were a nerd, dude, it, it was a hard oh, time. Dude, it's hard now. Now it's like cool though. Now I, it's kind of cool, right? F- yeah. The second I graduated high school, it got cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was a kid that like, I told Josh, like when I graduated middle school, I was four foot 10. I was very, very small. Yeah. You told me. And, uh, like, I got locked in a locker in, like, seventh grade. Uh, it happened, like, three brutal. or four times. Because I'm so small, they just, yeah. you know, the jocks get in there. And uh, the last time, they actually put a lock on it. And I was just like, well, I mean, I got a little room in here. So I just hung oh, out man. until the teacher came by and then it started kicking and get them in trouble. And in high school, in high school, I'm a freshman. There were people, like, throwing me in trash cans and everything. And oh, I was like, God. I'm the Star Wars kid. But yeah. it, is, it is what it is, you know? And that was, so, uh, that was, uh, lately? Uh, Naples. 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 That was Naples. But, uh, I mean, that's still pretty small. You know, I didn't mm. need a growth rate until, like, after high school. Yeah. So now it's like you see people that you wouldn't normally associate with nerddom, if you will. Yeah. Carrying Spider-Man backpacks. Yeah. You're like, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> I suffered so you could wear that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like uh, 21 Jump Street. You seen that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. It's like, what the hell? Comic books are cool now? Like, yeah, right? It's, what is this? <laughs> it's so funny, man. It's so true, though. It is. It is, absolutely. But, no, it's, it's cool. It's cool. And, I mean, now we're creating which is awesome you know we're making a movie mm-hmm. you know so that's it's pretty awesome it just feeds it's one big creative circle and now exactly. stuff is cool and with there being you know like 50 superhero movies out there there's room to work yeah which exactly. is very cool um what what are you excited for this year as far as movies coming out movies coming out um you know i'm I mean, Star Wars. Of course. <laughs> right? of course. So, December 18th. December 18th. 2015. It's on the calendar. Yep. Yeah, um, like, besides that, you know, like, Hateful Eight, obviously. Tarantino's yeah. flick. Yep. And, 
you know, Jurassic World, I'm kind of excited about. I'm yeah, big I'm digging it. Pratt fan. Didn't love the trailer, but yeah, like, we'll see what happens. I just yeah. want a Triceratops. Yeah, exactly. We just want a Triceratops. <laughs> I want some pterodactyls. That's what I yeah, want. Yeah, right. We'll see. And uh, besides that, man, um, well, I, I don't know. I can't really think of any big big movies coming out besides that. What about you? Mostly remakes. There's a Terminator one coming out. Ah, oh, that looks terrible. Yeah. It looks so um, bad. I mean, I'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah exactly. it's t2 we'll it. it's t2 remade like yeah. you got the sword arm yep. chugging it stuff c2000 you know? right is that the name yeah, of the I one think that so. can I think transform and shit i think not the girl one the guy yeah the guy the it's asian. like a mixture between the two isn't it an asian dude this time yeah okay yeah which they they replaced because t2 was so awesome yeah. like we need to do that again exactly get a milk carton have someone get stabbed t2 through it. is great but the first one man if you go back and watch first it, one's scary the first one is it's awesome. a different movie dude arnie as a bad guy the whole time? Is, yeah, is dude. Balls to the wall. Man. I, the, I, the first time I saw that movie, I was so scared. That ending scene, when he's like, Crowder, I was like, oh, yeah. dear God, it's going to get him. That's a great flick, man. It's so good. And it, it's just, it's so different. It's so underrated, others, I feel like, know? because T2 is so... T2 is so good. You know, so action, actioning. Like oh, yeah. The first one kind you get of motorcycles. A he's a cop. Dude, the semi-truck, dude. <laughs> you get Little the thumbs up in the lava. Yep. <laughs> it, it's that is a great movie. I'll be man. back. But the, Genesis looks really bad. What what else is coming out though? Um, I'm gonna forget now because you put me on Coming the spot. Mm. Whatever Star Wars, that's all that matters. Star Wars, dude. Star Wars is all that matters. Yeah, exactly. I, um, have you seen any good movies lately? Mad Max, man. Mad Max was very good. Mad Max. Mad Max is not about Mad Max, surprisingly. Yeah, it's uh, it's more about the world itself. I feel like and the women. The Charlize women? Theron's totally the main character. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. No, she's badass. Also, dude. Yeah, she's a badass. That movie, like, I might be talking so soon because I just saw it and it's like so fresh. But sure, that's in like for sure my top ten, man. Just, really, of all time. Of all time, dude. It's so, really, it's so game changing. Like, there's nothing it, like it ever. True. I mean, unless I haven't seen a movie that's like it. Right. To me, there's nothing else like that. Have you seen the other Mad Maxes? Yeah, for sure. I love The Road Warrior. Right. I actually just saw the first Mad Max the other night for the first time. I have not seen Thunderdome. Thunderdome. It doesn't sound too appealing to me. It's interesting. It's interesting. Exactly. That's that's the one with Tina Turner. Yeah, and the the kids and stuff. (laughs) But The Road Warrior is great. And like, I'll, I'll be that guy. Like, the new one's better. The new one is very good. I, I, like I was saying the other day, I love the ingenuity of it. Yeah. You know, I love that, like, she takes oil grease from behind the steering wheel, puts it on her forehead. Oh, we were talking about it last you know? night. Yeah. Uh, like, everything is just so perfect about yeah. the flick. And, like, you know, there's some gripes with it, like, maybe more dialogue from the main character. That's from, Yeah, from that's, that's, that's what I would so. want. Just slightly yeah. more talking. But at the same time, if we can't, I mean, Tom Hardy's got a love for things on his face. Yeah. You know, so if we can't hear Mad Max talking without hearing Bane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where's the car? Yeah. You know? Exactly. But so, God, man, that movie I get it. Really I mean, was good. It, it was very good. I, <laughs> uh, just the whole, like, it's a it's a two-hour chase scene, man. And it's, yeah. it's insane. It's so good. I can't stop talking about that flick. Maybe we should <laughs> go on with something else. <laughs> it's, one, it's one of those things that, like, everyone I know is like, I've seen it like three times. Like, yeah, I, I saw it twice. I want to see it. It's what better you... too every time you watch it. The second time, like I've seen it twice now. I'm definitely going to see it again before it's, really? before it's out of theaters. It was better the second time I watched it. What do you think it is about this movie that like is making everyone go so crazy? Do you think it is the fact that it's on the internet and everything's so viral and things can get popular just by them being popular? Yeah. You know, everybody likes it so everybody else goes and they want to like it. You know, it's weird because it's doing so well and everyone's going to see it. But it, I don't feel like it's that mainstream where like your mom and dads are talking about it. Right. I feel like it's like the the moviegoers, the people who go all the time, the cinephiles, right. are talking about it and spreading the word. Right. So it's weird that it's doing so well, but it's not at that crazy like Avatar level. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like I feel like it's doing so well because people are going to see it again and again and again. Yeah, I, I, it's number one. Yeah, it was very good. And uh, I think it's do. What was your original question? Why do you think people like it yeah, so much? Yeah, like, why do you think it's doing so well? Apart from it just being good. Like, it's it's that next level as yeah. far as everyone you know see yeah. it and everyone loves it. Uh, I think it's I think people are like that about it because they've never seen anything like it. Yeah. And they want to experience it again and again and again. And again <laughs> Lots and again. of agains. <laughs> exactly, man. Because it's just, it's so different. So, yeah, it's different, it's new, and that is appealing. So you think and it's like... Things? A two-hour, you know... Oh, yeah, it's, it's just awesome. <laughs> snorting cocaine for, like, two hours. Right. You're like, oh, my God, it doesn't stop. Right. <laughs> and it's just like... He's trailer, spitting gas. <laughs> yeah, the, the trailer showed the first 30 minutes of the film. Right. And you're like, oh, man. I, I, you know, trailers... I hate trailers. It's like, really? Man, I hope they didn't show the best parts of the movie. 
But when you watch the movie, they only showed the yeah, they showed nothing. parts of the first chase scene. Yep. And you're like, that is the best chase scene I've ever seen in cinematic <laughs> history. And then the next chase scene is better. And then the next <laughs> chase scene is better. And then you're just like, well, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and George Miller's just a madman. It's crazy that a 70-year-old man right. has made the most hip movie this year. <laughs> Think about that. It's true. A 70-year-old man has it's... made the most hip and like cool <laughs> movie this year. That's pretty awesome. Has there been a more original movie this year? This year? Yeah. No. That sounds weird. Original and it's like a remake. Yeah, reboot. right? Yeah. But you, you know what I'm <laughs> Actually, saying. Actually, there's been a lot of them. Yeah. It's <laughs> off, not remakes. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying, though. It's just, ugh. I can't it talk is, about that movie enough, man. It is very good. The music's great. It's uh, the effects are fantastic. The religion, the whole storm. mythos, yeah, the whole mythos. The bring of it. chrome paint, get yep. hyped up. Witness me, dude. Exactly. It's that's what I loved. I loved the thought that went into it because it's so well thought out. Yep, exactly. You know, and to the point where like, wit- like just as simple as witness me. Like everyone, watch me do this so I can go to this Valhalla Promised yeah. Land yep. with grenade spears. Yep. You know, and I love that it just throws you into it. They're not like Valhalla is the religion. You know, yeah, no, they just say it. And yeah. you have to pick it up on yourself. Yeah. You, you see know? him hanging out, two, two-headed two lizard, then just crunching. Oh, I should probably leave because I'm being chased right now. You're yeah, like, exactly, what? man. Exactly. But I, I love that flick. Yeah, Everything about it. It was very good. Yeah. It was very good. Is there a movie that you've seen recently where you were like, what the hell? This is amazing. It's in my... Like, what, what, what's the last movie you watched that you were like, this is definitely in my top ten? Ooh, that's Has a it good been a while? One. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while because my top ten is pretty, like... These are my movies. Besides you know Star I mean? Wars. Besides Star Wars. I love uh, Lord of the Rings. Okay. Lord of the Rings is my number two. I love What about them. the Hobbit love, trilogy? Love them. Nice. Love them. I, Lord of the Rings is slightly better, yeah. but so good. Gotcha. Um, I love The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise. Nice. I don't know. And Ken Watanabe? Yeah. yeah Was yeah. that his first big role? I guess, dude. Yeah, I think he's so. badass. I, I love that movie. Something I was really into Japanese culture growing up, mm-hmm. you know? I, I love that movie. Yeah. So it's I mean, don't get me wrong. The Last Samurai being a white guy. Yeah. Okay. Dude, it's such a good movie. Yeah. Um, I love... That's in your top ten. That, I would say top ten. Wow. Yeah, that yeah. was in top ten. Okay. I love, like, different movies that aren't set in real life, I guess. Because I've, very been, I've always like been Mad fancy. Max too. Yeah, I you like, know? I like the worlds that people create. Absolutely. Than, you know, I'm trying to escape from my reality. Not exactly. Exactly. You want to be it. taken to a galaxy far, far away or to Middle Earth, you exactly. know? Exactly. Like feudal Japan. Yeah. I loved, this is, and this is one I don't know a lot of people that enjoyed it. Yeah. I loved 47 Ronin. I have not seen it with Keanu Reeves. It felt like, yeah, if, uh, that's another one. Of course, the samurai being Keanu Reeves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, that's casting. That's your area. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love 47 Ronin so much because the beginning felt like a Hayao Miyazaki film. Okay. Like there's a woodland creature that's all weird as horns and colors and he's like, he was raised by demons then taken by the samurai and they hate him because he's part demon. Like it's so yeah. more in culture that I just I have to see it. that, man. I heard it was like in some, I heard it was an art house movie and then Whoa. whatever studio bought it and they were like, I've, we have to turn this into a blockbuster and it just didn't do too well. No, it flopped. Yeah. It was horrible box office, but I didn't see it in box office. I got it in red box and I was like, dude, I'm buying this movie now. Yeah. I love, like, they've got a woman who can shapeshift. Thank She's you She's like for this that. witch. Dude, it's so good. Thank you for seeing a it's movie good. and you liked it and you bought oh, it. Oh, that's what I do. Like, that's, what, that's what you're supposed to like, do. Like, exactly. I, I will be the first to admit I have pirated things. Who has? Please don't kill me. But I will red box a movie or I will pirate a movie. And then if I like it, I will go buy it. Yes, Like, that's I will it buy it be. on Blu-ray. Because I don't want to spend $25 on a movie I hate. Yeah, you know what I mean? I I'm American and I'm spoiled. So I'd be like, I don't want to waste my money on that. You yeah. know? Because you're not going to get that money back. And if exactly. it's bad, nobody wants it. <laughs> it's just like, if the filmmaker did uh, did his job and you like their movie, you should support Dude, them. Absolutely. So they can continue I, to do I that. I will always support art. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when um, I go to cons, I have artist friends that I'm like, I like this picture. Yep. Here is my money. Keep I still buy job. CDs, man. Like if I, do you? If I, yeah, I'll buy a CD, dude. That's like, awesome. I'd rather have the. I, I don't like buying the stuff on iTunes. Yeah, yeah. Like when an artist album come out that I really like, I'll buy it, man. I'll go to Best Buy or whatever, buy it there, or That's the vinyl. Awesome. Dude, I'm I'm for it. Like anytime, if you like someone, support their stuff. Yeah. You know, like Kyle Newman right now. He directed Fanboys. He just made another movie. Yes. Actually. I, I love Kyle Newman as a person. He's one of the people that's very open about loving the prequels. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I love the prequels. I'll be I the first one. I love the prequels, too. I was the right age. I love them. I love yeah. all six equally. Me, too. Well, Kyle Newman is the same way, and he'll go to bat for people that, like, hate on the prequels, yeah. and he'll just be... <laughs> he gets awful. Yeah. Well, I loved Fanboys. It was perfect. He just came out with a new movie, Barely Lethal. Yep. I, I like it. him. I bought his movie. 
Oh, I it's out. Yeah, I haven't watched it. It was on video on demand and very limited released. Yeah. But I was like, dude, I love your movie. I love what you stand for. I would support you. Like, so you bought it like, on VOD and you didn't even watch it. I haven't watched it yet. I bought it. And I haven't How does that work? Time. You like, can, uh, like, you get a limit. You can buy it on iTunes. Oh, okay, that's how you do it. And then you download it. Dude, uh, I've heard it's great, man. Like, it's. I mean, it's a. Jessica Alba was in it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a. It's a Mean Girls with spies. That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah it's a comedy. It's a, like mm-hmm. a high school comedy about a girl who was. Um, she's like a secret agent. Uh, raised in this school for kids at like six they're racing cars and like yeah. killing baby dolls to like get rid of emotional attachment she goes on a mission jessica alba's like the bad femme fatale she falls into the ocean they're like are you dead she fakes her death to have a normal high school life gets on youtube they find her and it's that kind of that movie. sounds amazing you know what i mean i'll, I'll watch that samuel jackson's in it he's, yeah he's the head of the school yeah jessica alba's the main chick like it just looks like fun yeah. it's like a fun movie like a fun flick. he talks about it that. I like him, so I was like, dude, what do you need? You know what I mean? I, I mm. will support someone if I like their art. And Fanboys is awesome if somebody has seen that. D- Fanboys needs to be on everyone's list to watch. It's exactly. so funny. Uh-huh. It's a take on like the Star Wars geeks from an outside perspective. Exactly. It, that was one of the first movies I've seen that like actually showed conventions. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's very strange. Because yep. a lot of movies have tried to show it, and it's like, dude, that's not what conventions are at right? all. Like, it looks very weird and yeah kind of they i correct. think the industry also tries to lead into the trope of like they're kind of weird yeah you know what exactly I mean? anytime they show a geek he's always like a big guy with like scruff and a ponytail yep. and glass he's awkward he's the guy from the simpsons yep and you he's creeping I mean? out the celebrity yeah he's like, no, heavy man. breathing this is regular people <laughs> has a cheetos wrapper in his pocket yep. you know exactly it's like that's not how we are you know yeah. that's cool i mean there's some out there more power to him but Come Shatner on, yes. too, going back to Shatner. He's fucking awesome in that movie. I'm, oh, so hilarious. good. Yeah, <laughs> he just throws the file. You didn't get it from me. <laughs> so good. Such yeah, a good. I love crazy. Seth Rogen playing uh, both sides, where he's like the pimp to, to Jamie King, but he's also the like huge Star Wars Trekkie guy, uh, the, the Trekkie guy that yeah. makes fun of Han Solo and he fights himself. Yeah, that was great. It's so man. bonkers. Yeah, I like the uh, the the one dude in that movie. I can't remember his name. The uh, the bigger guy, you know. Oh yeah, uh, Dan Fogler. Dude, he is hilarious. So funny. He's in Taking Home Tonight, touch. right? Oh yeah, dude, that movie's dude, so good. He is so funny, so funny. man. <laughs> he's. I want to see that guy in more flicks. He's he's in Barely Lethal. Oh yes, okay, he perfect. He's a cameo. Yeah, he's a cameo. That guy needs more like Agreed. more flicks out, man. He, uh, from what I understand, he has his own graphic novel that he works on. Oh like, cool, almost full time. See, that's a guy that. He's doing something right. It does what he does. He's acting. Absolutely. And he's doing his own graphic novel. Yeah. That's awesome. See Balls of Fury? He, yeah, he's yeah. in that. I've never seen Balls of Fury, actually, but it's he's so like funny. one of It's the so guys. ridiculous, yeah. but it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so I think we're right about time in five minutes, so I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, We've been riffing, dude, about dude. nonsense. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> um... Tethered, what's left? Tethered. We're still shooting. We have to shoot the third act. Okay. And that's a lot. It's like 25 pages. Whew. But it's, uh, I mean, that doesn't sound a lot because we've been shooting, you know, like five to 10 pages a day. Right. It's Knocking a lot them of out. blocking, though. I'm a lot sure. Of action and stuff. So it's going to be, you know, it's going to be difficult, but dude, filmmaking is difficult in general. True. So True. that's what we have left. And then after that, man, we're actually shooting the well, the very first scene of the film. We're shooting that last, which is funny. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> it was very funny. So we're going to shoot the last act all in order. Okay. Uh, in continuity. And then we're going to shoot the very first scene at the end. And then we'll be wrapped. And then you can have a life outside of Tether. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you guys got to edit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's Chris, man. I, mean. <laughs> <laughs> I casted it. My job's done. Yeah, uh, exactly. But that's what's left, my man. Are you working on anything else besides Tethered? Um, just, like I said, a couple things in the works. Nothing too serious. Yeah. Just, you know, doing the regular work. Everyday, uh, the 9 to 5 job. Casting yeah. other stuff, commercials, infomercials. And uh, hopefully, you know, moving. I kind of want to move, man. Yeah? You know, there's not much going on in Florida right now. Unfortunately, right. with the tax credit being taken away and stuff. Right. So I know it's... people are fighting for it to come back, but it doesn't look very good. Yeah. yeah, so I want to move to Atlanta as well. Okay. I know Bob was on another episode and he said something about that. Right. So I want to move to Atlanta. A lot of work going on out there. And, you know, hopefully, man, just keep doing this. As yeah, long as you absolutely. Can make a living, man. I'm That's happy the dream. To do it. Exactly. What's next for you? 
Uh, well, I'm in a movie called Tethered. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little indie thriller. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just kind of, I mean, I got cosplay. I got hobbies. I'm gonna pick up the ukulele, just cause. You're gonna take a little break after Tethered, maybe like a month before you jump on another like scripted thing. Well, if I can get on another scripted thing, then you'll do it. <laughs> yeah, you'll go yeah. right into it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. I mean, Chris is writing other stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll probably audition for that. And... Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's kind of just playing it by ear. Mm-hmm. See what happens. Yeah, man. Awesome. It should be fun. Yeah. I'll have some stuff for you, too. Dude, let me know. <laughs> let me know. Anything, I am down. Even naked stuff. Anyway, so, Dimitri, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, I sir. I thoroughly appreciate it. It's been a good time. No, you're awesome. And uh, Thank yeah. you for making me feel important. Absolutely, because you are. No. You cast the director. Without you, I wouldn't be here. Uh, that's a fact no nah, you would have found a way <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> it's a tight set <laughs> they would have kicked me off forever ago <laughs> oh, God. but yeah thanks for coming on i appreciate it um we'll definitely have you back on sounds good find me on youtube <laughs> yes where yes where can we find you in, uh, in, in social media instagram dimitri black at dimitri black d-e-m-i-t-r-i black the color nice and then on twitter just dimitri blanco D E M I T R I B L A N C O. And then Facebook, just my name, man, Dimitri Blanco. Add me on nice. Facebook. I don't get creeped out. I'll add you. <laughs> I'm going to go. There you go. <laughs> and that's it, man. I don't really have a. It, depending on this comes out, you know, check out YouTube for Grind Up Films. There Maybe you go. We'll have some new stuff on there, so check that out. Sweet. Yep. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you, and, sir. Uh, I'll see you. It was later. an amazing time. Yeah. See you soon. Now let's go have a beer. Yeah. Lots of beers. <laughs> Thank you.